So today I'd like to welcome Emma and Todd Aiken from Taps Air to this business spotlight interview series. And uh, so welcome. And maybe if we just start, uh, tell us a little bit about your business, what you do and how long you've been doing it for. Cool. Um, thank you very much for having us. We really appreciate it. Um, so our business is Taps Air Plumbing and Air Conditioning. Um, we do plumbing, we do air conditioning, we've got um, residential customers and commercial customers. Mm -hmm. We've been in business in the Albury Wodonga area now for five and a half years. Fantastic. And so did you start the business or did you buy into the business? No, we started it from scratch. It was um, a crazy idea around the dining table one night. And yeah, we've we've grown from there, from that idea. Fantastic. And so in terms of your journey uh, from, from when you first started the business to now, what would you say has been the biggest challenge you actually faced in starting the business? I'm going to let you answer that one. Um, probably uh, backing ourselves. Like mm -hmm. I, I knew I could do the work. Yes. And I knew Emma could do the business side of it, but just having having the guts to go out there and say, let's do it, and to actually do it was probably yeah, the biggest challenge. Yes, yeah. And how, how did you work yourself through that, Todd? Um, literally worked through it. <laughs> just keep working. You don't, think, I, you don't really think it's sort of, yeah, I, I, you know, you, you worry about the business, but yeah, it's just just keep working and working and putting in. Yeah, so yeah, one of the key challenges with starting up a new business is where where do you find your clients? Where do you find your customers from? So, what was the process that you went through in those initial stages to find those customers that would enable the business to grow? Uh, initially, a lot of it was through friends and family. Mm -hmm. um, they knew I was a plumber, knew I knew what I did, and oh, we're doing a reno or we're doing this. Can you come and help? Can you price this? And then, oh, hang on, we've got a friend that's also doing a bathroom. Can you have a look at that? And it just it grew through word of mouth, really, and, and a bit of advertising. Yeah. Uh, but most of it was word of mouth. Um, right. We very early on in the piece, so put together a Facebook page. Um, and sort of showed photos of the jobs that we'd done um, and that sort of thing. And that helped grow the business. Um, mm -hmm. Once we developed a logo and plastered that all over the vehicles, that really helped as well. Um, and just setting up a few sort of campaigns, like a pre summer winter campaign that we would advertise really quite aggressively yep. and then that would get us into people's homes and they would then become repeat customers so it sort of snowballed from there right and Emma in terms of the advertising that you did what what uh, um what type of advertising did you engage in so right at the very beginning we started with the yellow pages Mm -hmm. um, and it probably took us about 12 months, but we realised that was getting us nowhere. Right. Um, the, the Facebook page really took off. Um, we did some Facebook paid ads, some boosting of the pages and worked out what was working with that. Yes. Um, we joined a few of the local pages, um, you know, the Baron Duda community page, that sort of thing, and spread, shared our ads with them and that mm -hmm. helped grow. Um, we had little postcards made up. Yes, yep. Somebody's house to do an evap cooler service. The boys would then postcard drop three houses either side of that house. Lovely. And that worked really well. We put together um, an email list of all of our customers and email them prior to the start of each campaign. Mm -hmm. Sort of click here to book your service, and that worked really. Just tried all sorts of different things. Um, we moved into Google Ads probably the last two years. They right. worked as well. Yep. Um, 
So, oh. yeah. So, yeah, no, fantastic. So, um, if we, we think about the pandemic, what impact did that have on your business? And what are one or two actions that you've actually taken that you're going to keep, things that you've done differently that than prior to the pandemic? Um, so the pandemic just about killed um, in the very beginning. Um, just from the point of view of the first lockdown and you know, it's really hard to change a plumbing business. It's not like you can work from home. It's not like you can diversify your business like a restaurant can where you're not providing sit-down service anymore. You're providing takeaway service. Um, so the first lockdown when everybody panicked and wouldn't let anybody into their home, mm -hmm. business dried up. Right, yep. And, and that was tough to get through. And then people sort of settled down and, you know, we implemented masks and COVID plans and sanitizer, and we promoted all of that, asked all the questions before we went into people's homes and everything settled down a bit. We were considered essential workers for the first couple of lockdowns so we could continue working, which was great. We got through that. And uh, how many lockdowns did we have? So many. Uh, towards the last few, they changed all the rules and regulations and we were no longer considered essential workers. Right. Only going to somebody's home if it was emergency work. They shut down the commercial sites. And so all of a sudden, again, we were faced with a very real prospect of the business drying up. Um, mm. And, and throw, throw into that, we're on the border here. We're, yeah. we're, we're right on the Murray River. So to get over the border was uh, anything from half an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the time of day. Yes. So, yep. And all our suppliers are on the other side of the border. So um, you either had to make sure you did a run early in the morning mm -hmm. and hope that you got it right, or you'd be sitting there for half your day. It was yes. so much time, it wasn't funny. Um, yeah. And the same coming back, like, and the problem with that was you couldn't charge the customer for the time that you were sitting in in the in the lockdown. Yeah. So, so it sort of made it, we got to a point where we had to say to customers, look, we can come and do it, but it's going to cost you this. Yes. Most customers, unless they were desperate, would say, yeah, no, we understand, because they live on the border too, they understand the crossing. Um, no, that's all right. Thanks very much. Thanks for your help. Yeah. Sort of wait. So, <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. So, so if if you think back and look back at those challenging times, what are one or two things that or changes that you might have made then? Are you still maintaining today, which is enhancing the business even more? I don't. Nothing really. Yeah. Right. Yep. Sadly, we couldn't really diversify. All we could do is put jobs on hold, or that sort of thing. Like we're still doing the, the hand sanitizing. We're probably more germ phobic, but then again, I think most of the population is. Yes. Um, and, you know, we're very careful about that sort of thing. If anybody's got a cough or a sniffle, they go home, that sort of thing. But in terms of changes that we put in place to enhance the business i'm not sure that the pandemic affected us that right oh, okay fantastic so um on your journey in business what's been the biggest learning that either of you have actually had um i can do what i think i can do i've, I've yep. learned, learned to back myself realistically yes I've known that I'm I'm good at what I do. Yeah. Actually, see it on paper, to see it in jobs, to you know, to to get customers to say, oh, thanks for that. You've done a great job. Not yep. just for me, from my team. Um, but yeah, we can we I can do it. Yeah. And how how important it ha has it been for you, Todd, to come to that realization? Um, it's been fairly important, like. I was only saying to Emma the other day, I, I still feel like 
the we're, we're working from home, you know. It mm -hmm. wasn't until a couple of months ago that I realised that, hey, we have got a, a fairly substantial business sitting here and we've, yes. we've, we've made it, we've done it, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's probably where I'm at. Yeah. Look, it, it, it's one of the things that I see quite regularly in business is um, with business owners is, first of all, is self-confidence, self-belief in yourself, yeah. perseverance and persistence. And yeah. it's just something that, um, you know, there's always going to be some peaks and troughs in business. It's how you actually deal with those at that time that becomes important. So, yeah, uh, fantastic. Well done, Todd. What about for you, Emma? Um, I think the same thing. So my background is, is business orientated and I've worked in other people's businesses and sort of helped build them, but I haven't actually built a business from scratch before. So, um, you know, most of the time I was saying to Todd, oh, you know, this is fine, yeah, we can do this. But inside I was thinking, oh, God, you know, have I made the right decisions? And, I, you know, I'm responsible for the business side of things. He goes out and does the plumbing side of things and he knows what he's doing. But, you know, that sort of confidence of, oh, we've got this rested on my shoulders. And um, there were times when I was really panicked and didn't want to show him. And there were times when I sort of had to say to him, okay, look, getting a bit tight here we're going to have to change how we do things or rain in the spending or that sort of thing but um, I think communication we've always communicated very well um, we we try we always try not to take the business home but it's impossible like <laughs> you yep. do there are times when he just says right that's it no more we don't want to talk about this tonight um, but yeah just Watching it grow, I, I'm very much figures orientated. So oh. I watch the figures and 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 can so, so understanding the numbers, Emma. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and what level of importance do you place on understanding your numbers? For me, it's the most important thing. Whether it be the numbers of clients coming in, whether it be the financial growth of the company. Um, the bottom line in the profit and loss. For me, yes. that's absolutely all of that's essential. I've got to understand all of that to know where my business is at. Yeah, absolutely. And Todd, how much importance do you play on that? To be perfectly honest, I would have no idea where, what is where and how that, because that's not my strength. I don't, yep. I don't pretend to know anything about it. I just... Yes. Emma, yep. Emma tells me we need to do this or we need to do that, it's done. Yep. Um, yeah. Look, I think it's important for every business owner that they must un understand their numbers because when you understand the numbers, the numbers will actually enable you to make those better decisions, decisions that some, you know, if you're trying to guess and, well, yeah, I think this is going to be okay, that's when things can come terribly undone. Whereas when you know the numbers, they will enable you to make the best decisions in terms of whatever the next thing may be that you're looking at investing in. Um, how important is systems for you in your business? Essential. And, and what type of systems have you implemented? Every type of system. Um to when the guys first rock up to a, pa a patient, a client's home, um, how they speak to the client, how they walk through the, the house, how they leave the job, um, how we do our invoicing, our everything, everything that we do, there's a system and, and an explanation of why I've set that system up the way that it's been set up. Um, yes. You know, Excellent. Um, yeah, I'm 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 very big on systems. Um, yeah, it, I guess I have a bit of a saying that says, "Systems run the business, people run the systems." Yeah, and uh, so important in every business. So that's just one of my favourite sayings. So, do you have a favourite saying that helps 
keep you motivated and focused. <laughs> um, not really. None, none of the G rated anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. What about you, Emma? Yeah, I've got two. Um, if not you, then who? Mm -hmm. And the other one is um, do not um, do not fear failure, but be terrified of regret. Absolutely, really, really like those. They uh, so uh, I can see how they would have a big impact. Yeah, no, great stuff. All right, uh, we'll run with two more questions. So, in terms of um, if you were to start your business again, what would you do differently next time? I don't know. I've never really thought of it. It's well, everything we've done, we've done for a reason. Yes. Whether, whether it's been a change in situation or whether that's how we've decided that's how we're going to start it. Yep. So, I, I don't think we'd change anything because what we can control, we have control, and what we can't, well, nobody can. So yeah, you yeah. just go with the flow. Yeah. Okay. So, no, no, that that's great because I'm I'm getting the perception that when you when you first started your business, you actually came in with some quite specific ideas. Um, would that be correct, Emma? Yeah, and I think again. Um, having had the, the background of working in other businesses, I knew what I wanted. I knew how I wanted to set the company up. Um, Todd had very specific ideas of, you know, how he wanted to send out invoices and what he wanted them to look like and, and how he was going to approach the clients and things. And that was great. And I was more, okay, well, I want, you know, this particular program that I want us to work with and I want to be able to have this particular social media channel. And um, so between the two of us, we sort of brought those together and, and it seems to have worked so far. So Yeah, fantastic. That's great. Um, so what does the future look like for you and TAPS here? And... What do you see as being the main challenges in moving forward or even to get yourselves to the next level? Yeah, our future at the moment in the last week has gone crazy. Mm -hmm. um, there's so many, we've got so many options being thrown at us to grow. Um, but we've just got to, I, I've always been of, I don't want to grow too big. Yes. This, this business for me was a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be working 100 hours a week and, you know, um, but our business has the opportunity now to grow and we've just got to control it the way we want it to grow. Yep. So that's from my point of view. Um, Emma, Emma will tell you she wants 100 employees, <laughs> and, you, know, 10, <laughs> you know, 10 people in the office, but, yeah, it's... I never want to get to that. I, yeah. I, I don't want to get to that, but but my vision is getting him off the tools. Right. Yep. I, I would like to set it up in such a way that, you know, when we first started, if we went on holiday, we closed the door for a week. Yes. I would like to be able to um, us go on a holiday and the business keep working. And yep. us not have to be answering the phone all the time or panicking about it. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love somebody in the office who can do my job. Um, I'd love someone who Todd can just be on the end of the phone going, oh, yeah, mate, this is what you have to do, rather than him have to be on the roof all the time doing it himself. Yes. So, yep. you know, mm. residual income, business progression, that's how I see it. I, I don't want, you know, 50 trucks lined up in the backyard and and a whole bunch of people tromping through regardless of what he thinks but it, there's like a middle ground there that we want to find yes yeah well here, here at action coach we define a successful business as a commercial 
profitable enterprise that works without you. Yes. And yeah, for all the all the reasons that you've just outlined, Emma. So um, yeah, that, that's a great vision to have. Um, all right. Well, I'd like to thank you both for your time today, and uh, for anybody that may be watching this uh, on YouTube, is if you have any air, uh, plumbing, air conditioning uh, requirements around the Albury Wodonga re uh, region, please feel free to reach out to Emma and Todd. Thank you for your time today. Fantastic. Thank, thank you. you so much for having us.